miles of this place. Like there should and not of course, be this anything. Is, this is one night when I probably yeah I did not have Uncle Charlie with me. <laughs> yeah. So but you gotta make sure you have Uncle Charlie always. Well, I don't like to carry when I'm out on an investigation. I like it when you do. But you know, I just that one there. We were out of state anyway, so yeah. I wasn't sure about reciprocity with South Carolina on that one. No, so. we're not in South Carolina. That's Georgia. Was it Georgia? That's Georgia. Okay. Well, all it's right. just it's in Brunswick, Georgia. Okay. This is where Butler is. That's right. That's right. I should know that. I called the Georgia DNR. Duh. <laughs> but yeah, no. I mean, it's it's a very important thing that gets overlooked by a lot of these people, and and, and you know, if people keep continue. To do things the wrong way and, and, and not follow the rules, it's going to ruin it for the rest of us. Well, there's one place that I want to go to really bad. Um, it's out near Somerville. Uh, I don't know if any of you folks that are Georgia locals remember this, but in about 1984, we had a couple of retired professors that built a kind of like a cabin home in the woods out near Somerville, Tryon, which is... Way out around Canton somewhere, but I mean, it's out in the middle of the woods. And they were alternative lifestylers, and supposedly they were having sexual gatherings at the place, and and they were inviting other people in, and they brought some people into their inner circle that they shouldn't have, and they ended up being robbed and murdered. And that I've been wanting to go out there. It's, uh, God, I can't remember the name of it right off the top of my head now. But I've talked to the son of the owner, and I've been trying to get permission for it. And everybody said, "Why don't you just go? It's open. It's out in the woods. The cops let you go, and everything." Well, what if we're the first ones to go to one night? And somebody wants to press charges. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's one of the things. I mean, we just try to stick by our rules in every scenario, and it covers our ass in every scenario. I mean, even without, even not even talking about location specific stuff. We do a lot of documentation for our, our investigators. We do background checks. We do, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of documentation that we keep on hand. And we're probably going to end up having to do drug testing, too, because the uh, new liability company that I'm looking at picking up for us is going to probably require that everybody in the group takes a drug test once a year. Yeah, which, which is not a bad thing. You know, it's not a bad thing. It just, you know... As a liability company, you want to know if the people that you're insuring aren't running around doped up. So, you know, it's it, it's no guarantee, but it's less of a chance if they drug test. So Yeah. No, I totally agree. What would you say, as as a founder of a group, what would you say the, the most important thing uh, to do if somebody's starting up a group? What would be the most important thing that they should do right off the bat? Research. <laughs> research. Research. Research what you need. Prepare yourself. Organize your group under under your local businesses. It doesn't cost that much. You reserve names that way. Makes it a lot easier to do business down the road. Makes it easier if you end up getting any money and revenue down the road. Well, you know, and that's another thing. We don't charge money. From the people that we investigate. Hell no, never. I mean, we'll take tips. You know, if they want to pay for gas or something like that, or buy me a meal, I'm. But good we never ask for it. No, we never do. But never even hint at it. But we get revenue from from some other sources. We make some equipment and we sell it to other teams. Uh, you know that kind of stuff. And it's going to make it a lot easier when you file taxes if you've got everything on the up and up on that. So you need to do the research through that. You need to get the forms that you need. You need to investigate insurance for your team. Um, you need to find potential members that you trust. And in, in my case, it was really good that Landon and I had been on a team together because we talked about it a couple times and it was like, well, hell, you know, we knew that we wanted to get away from where we were. And we talked about what we wanted. It was like, Fuck, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, we. I remember. I remember the conversation. <laughs> I was outside on my porch, just walking around, pissed off because of the shit that was going on in our other group. And I was the same way. And him and I were <laughs> talking to each other. And I, and I called him and said, "Dude, I just quit." Well, I did too. I said, "Well, you know, I've been thinking about going on mine." So have I. I said, "Well, fuck, let's do it, dude. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, what are we talking about?" 
<laughs> next thing you know, I mean, next day we're lo- we're making logos, trying yeah. to come up with something, trying to come up with a name. I mean, that's where you got to start. You got to start with okay, what's going to be our name? You were doing all the the well, backing yeah, work on the paperwork. You have to come up with a mission for your group too. I mean, you know, yeah. you got to have a purpose. There's a hundred thousand paranormal groups out there. What is it that's going to make you different than the other guys? Exactly. That's a huge thing. You know, what's going to say... Here's another thing that I want that I want to say to people, because there's going to be people that are listening to this that are not part of a group, that are, you know, people that maybe have their own house haunted, right? And um, it's one of the important things is, is or maybe you're, maybe you're just even interested in joining a group. I... Is he going downstairs? I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I recommend that you guys question the group that you're looking to join. Do they have this paperwork? Uh, what are their procedures? You know what I mean? If they don't have that stuff lined up, then I'm telling you right now, you're going in for a, a world of, of, of displeasure and hurt. Well, I'll be honest with you. I had no intentions on being a member of this group. It was your wife that found us, right? It was my wife that found the group. She says, oh, I need to meet this guy named Jerry in Little Five Points in Atlanta. Yeah. And my wife, I love her to death, don't get me wrong, but she walks around like a horse does with blinders on the side. She looks straight ahead, and she never looks around at her surroundings. She told me where it was going to be at. I was like, oh, hell no. Then she told me what time it was, and I was like, oh, hell no. If it means that much to you, then I'm going with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, don't get me wrong. I met Jerry. I didn't think too much of him because of the way he looks. I was like, you know, I don't trust this fucker. And I'm not a very trusting person when it comes to it anyways. So I went on a investigation and we went out to, I guess, it would have been a high-profile case because Jerry and Landon were very much bragging about this place because of the former group that they were both with. And they didn't want to broadcast it. Mm -hmm. So I went out there and I went out on that first investigation. I'm like, you know, this is a bunch of bull crap. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. There was a couple things out there that I questioned and I couldn't understand and couldn't make heads or tails. Which is now, I wouldn't say it's got me hooked. But I actually enjoy myself going out there now. You look forward to it every year. Because this is, you know, this, this is, what he's talking about is the first place we ever investigated as a group together. And and we've kind of vowed to continue at least at a minimum once a year to return. And that investigation site is absolutely amazing on the evidence, the quality of evidence, the quality of the EVPs, the, qual- the quality the, the, of everything. Yeah, the experience, the the people who who are there, you know, watching over the caretakers. I mean, everything <clears throat> about it is amazing. Even the caretakers out there are belong to a paranormal group. group. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll we actually that need to have them amazing. on. We should have them on uh, because you know they investigate <clears throat> that place more than more than anybody in the entire state, obviously. Oh yeah, and they and they were not surprised to hear of some of the evidence that we caught in that place. No, no. you know, it cor- all it did is corroborate their stories too. Yeah, that's all it did. In fact, there was things that they didn't even tell us that we said, you know, this happened to us, and they're like, huh? Yep. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh shit well, actually, he. I remember one of them said, "Oh yeah, I forgot about that." Yeah. You know, yeah, it happened to us too. But, you know, besides the plantation house, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention where oh, we went. Can, yeah, I've said it a hundred well, times. Yeah, we went to, the, of course, it was the Gaither Plantation. There was a church that was moved on the property. It's my favorite place. I'm talking I talk some serious crap. Oh, I'm going. I'm going in the church. I'm going in the church. And we actually get out there. And I was listening to my uh, video evidence that I had of myself with my GoPro on top of my head. You know, how much I was trying to chicken myself out of going inside there. It's just got, it's... It's just got a creep factor of a 10, I would say. That church does. Yeah, it does. It's very... It, you it's walk very in, it's very heavy. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you know, you stepped out of the room for a minute, but we were talking about, you know, you know what it takes to, to become a group and the, and the importance <clears throat> of the documentation for each investigation and, and each member and things like that. What... Would you would you say being someone who's never who's never dealt with the paranormal prior to you know your wife dragging you to this meeting, 
Was there anything along the way that you were like, man, this might be a little over, overkill? Or were you more impressed that that these things were that well, you know, I didn't we require expect, these things? Yeah, when Jerry, when he uh, he handed me a freaking packet of paperwork. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what the hell is this? I didn't expect all this. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, a lot of it's more common sense. It's there to protect you. Mm-hmm. It's not there to protect a group. It's not. To, it's there to protect you. And that's all the paperwork's there for. You know, I wouldn't want some crazy nut job. And I think y'all did criminal backgrounds too, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about you going to a private job. You don't want somebody that's been, uh, you know, tried and convicted, you know, five or six times of petty theft when you got them in a private investigation. Mm-hmm. You know, what's that going to do? It's going to put a bad name out there for yourself. Exactly. The paper trail is a necessity. It is. It, yeah, I'm talking about, you know, I've been on several investigations. Uh, we went out to Stone Mountain Cemetery. Oh, guess who showed up? You know, we had uh, Stone Mountain Police Department show up on site. It's nice to say, hey, buddy, we had permission to be out here at this time. Here's the documentation. Here's your documentation. And what did he do? He says, okay. Cool, no problem. Yeah. Y'all find anything out here tonight? (laughs) And then he comes out and joins in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, Uh, tells us what he's going on, what he saw. Yeah. And uh, it was was quite a neat experience. But... um, yeah, you just don't want to go down that avenue when you're not supposed to be your trust where you're trespassing on someone else's property. Yeah, no. And cemeteries is one of those things that are you're caught on the cemetery after hours. Generally, you know they're ran by the state, and they generally shut down at dusk. Which is funny. For that, vandalism. You know, you've been talking about the Stone Mountain Confederate Cemetery. We had the mayor of Stone Mountain reach out to us for us to investigate that. That's how we got that location. We really? Have, we have letters from the mayor of Stone Mountain allowing us to be there. See, I didn't know all that. All oh, yeah. I know is you say, oh, oh we yeah. got paperwork to be out there. That's all I was concerned with. Oh, yeah. No, the mayor of Stone Mountain is the one that invited us there, which is which is one of those things. You know, once you, once you build a name for yourself in your area, I mean, that kind of stuff just happens – all the time, and, and it just you just randomly start getting calls and people, you know, word of mouth travels. Word of mouth, especially in some of these local towns for stuff like this, travels very very quickly. I do a lot of traveling down in the southern parts of not really southern parts, more of the central parts of Georgia, Monticello, Social Circle, Eastman, Georgia. All these little podunk hillbilly towns that's got. You know, these old, old buildings. And, I, you know, while I'm servicing these customers in their house, I'll ask them questions about the place. Monticello, I've been wanting to talk to the group about that, has a graveyard with a church with a little history behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, it was actually set up as a Civil War. And this is just by me talking to the locals around there. You know, a little Civil War. Um, it was uh, a hospital for the Civil War Confederacy. Mm-hmm. But... um you know that I, you know, I, I don't know how to go about that, and I've been meaning to say something to the group about it. See if we can get in, maybe talk to a, a, a one of the, the the county commissioners down there, yeah. and see if we can get into there. Well, see, that's one of the things is like, especially if you guys are out there, you know, looking to start a group or whatnot, you have to plan way in advance for things. I mean, we plan for investigations that are months and months down the road. You well, I think I mean? Gaither was planned, what, six, eight months out, wasn't oh, yeah. it? I mean, we try to go the exact same time every year, so, you know, we're way ahead when we start talking uh, about that stuff. Um, but, Jerry, I'm glad to see you're back, buddy. Did you make it up the stairs? But that brings me to the point um, of what we're doing here today. I mean, today we're here for, you know, obviously we're here to do a podcast as well and kind of kind of talk to you guys and let you know what we're doing, but... We're here for a planning a planning meeting where we we try to do this at least once a year, going through all of our our bylaws, um, all of our rules, all of our paperwork, make sure our assets are covered, right? And that's one thing I didn't touch on is the bylaws. Yeah, you need to write a good set of bylaws and a constitution for your team so that they know exactly what's expected of them and they know exactly what boundaries you have. Um, it's you can't run the team without that. So, you know, and let's face it, in a way, we're kind of like employers. I mean, you know, everybody's a volunteer, but at the same time, we have to take steps to make sure that everybody does exactly what they're supposed to do. And if you get something, you know, let's just say you got somebody on there 
on your squad that's got uh, a substance abuse problem or something along those lines and they come to an investigation and you feel like they're putting the rest of your team at risk, you have to be able to outline exactly.